Hello everyone, welcome to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob and I'm here to play more of... Oh, it's the wrong box. It's the wrong box. Oh, but I'm playing Final Girl. Either way, I'm playing Final Girl. Man. I, I have to change it now. I don't want anyone to be confused. <laughs> uh, I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Let's see. Is it huge? There you go. Easy fix. Just like that. <gasps> wait, wait. There we go. Hello. Hello, everyone watching live. Hello to you watching later. Uh, I'll be playing Final Girl today. Uh, and disclaimer. Disclaimer right up front. Uh, for the person that commented, I already replied to them, but somebody commented, I think it was on this game. And every now and then I have to address this because there's people out there that don't understand what live streaming is and live streaming, or, or even just making videos of a playthrough of a board game. If you're doing it right, you're going to, you know, talk about the game, talk while you play the game. You're going to add extra time, especially in a solo game, where normally you'd play a solo game on your, you know, your board game table, your kitchen table, at, at home, and you would just be quiet. You're just playing the game. And it's pretty quick if you don't get into the analysis paralysis and get stuck, you know. So, of course, the game's usually fast. And this game is no different. This game, yeah, it takes a little bit of setup, but the game overall, usually pretty quick. But then once you add streaming on top of it or making, you know, video content, it's going to prolong it. So just full disclaimer, this game is not as long to play as the video you clicked on 
may lead you to believe. So I might sit here for two, three, who knows, four hours playing this game, chatting with the chat, intro, looking things up, looking up rules, talking about cards, hanging out after, going through every single decision, doing polls, you know, laughing, making jokes, whatever. Um, please don't let that reflect on your impression of how long this game takes. I usually think it goes without saying, but every now and then someone makes a comment on the video who doesn't know what live streaming is and they start, you know, ripping on the game that it's too long or I play too slow or whatever. But just understand uh, it is what it is. Deal with it. All right. Uh, so full disclosure, uh, this one was purchased with our funds. Thank you to everyone uh, who supports the channel. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Uh, this copy that we're playing with, I mean, the expansion box or whatever, uh, was purchased from our local game store using funds from the channel. Thank you so much. Uh, but the core box was provided to us by Van Ryder Games, uh, just so you know. And yeah, we're playing the Poltergeist, uh, monster villain horror, whatever it is, uh, killer. And we're at Creech Manor, uh, which we'll see in a sec. All right. Uh, uh, Linia, Linia, I'm not, I'm not saying that right. I'm so sorry. Uh, it says, hello, the stream is perfectly timed. My copy of Final Girl with Haunting of Creech Manor gets delivered today. Okay, well, there's going to be spoilers then. Be careful. I have not played either. So you and I are both going to play this today for the first time. Uh, the previous ones I played just to make sure I was good with the rules. But when I pulled out this one and read the rules... Uh, it was not too bad, so we're just going to wing it, see how it goes. Um, so yeah, I don't know, we'll figure out what's going on and we'll go through the rules, of course. Part of what I do here, we'll go through the what's unique to setup. We'll do setup live on stream, uh, some of it at least, and then we'll go through that. Uh, Linnea. Linnea? Linnea! Okay, that, that sounds makes sense. Linnea, I'm so sorry. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. I started to pronounce it and then I was like, wait a second, this is, this is throwing me off. I, I don't recognize this name. But that sounds, I have heard that name said before, so that's cool. Linnea, hello. Don't care about spoilers, it makes it easier for me not to have to dig as deep into the rules by myself. Understood. I was just joking about the spoiler stuff. This game, I don't really care that much. Um, but I don't read through like the villain finale cards, the terror deck or anything. I just shuffle it up and play and see how it goes. And the item deck too. Sometimes we look at some of the items. Um, but yeah, I just like the surprise as you're playing and some discovery, you know, things that pop up, some events. Like I don't read through the events before I play. Obviously, as you play a few times, you'll start seeing some of the same ones and it'll, you kind of know what might happen. Um, but yeah, I like how, how you don't see that much it feels like in a playthrough. Um, so when you do play, it's like feels kind of different, like different things happen, tells a different story. So very replayable, I think. Um, so just for funds, uh, hostage, or, pff, oh man, I see, I read it every time. I see it right at the very top, re-implements hostage negotiator. Uh, but this is, this is almost in the top 1,000 board games of all time. At the very top, you see rank overall. So if you own the game, you love the game, go rate the game. That'll help bump it up. But for a solo only game, obviously it's, you know, a small segment of the board gaming market. I don't know how much of a segment it is on BGG out of hardcore gamers who touch solo games. I don't know and actually go rate them. Um, but that will always be a hamper. Like a solo only game would, should, should have trouble, you know, because it's just like reducing its appeal to, to, to the mass audience, right? But uh, almost in the top 1,000. So I think that's really good for, for a, a game that was like hard to find. Only backers really have it until now when it's in stores now. And I don't know how big the print run was, but let me tell you, when, when I, when it first, on the first Kickstarter, when it delivered and showed up in retail, it was like gone in seconds. I, I don't think they printed that many, but uh, yeah. So as it gets out to more people and more people play it, uh, I think that'll also help out too. But just something interesting. I just saw it got around that 1000 mark, so I thought it was neat. I thought that was neat. Uh, I wonder what the highest rated solo game is. I wonder if it's actually this at this point. Uh, yeah, I don't know. How would you know? Like, is that a, hold on. Let's, let's, 
let's let's try let's do a little digging for a couple minutes here. Hey Darren, how's it going? Let's do some digging. I bet I bet there's a family for this. I bet there's a family. Is there? Yep. Players solitaire only games. Okay, let's let's see. Maybe we can figure this out. Let's go to linked games and then let's list it by rank. Under Falling Skies is your highest ranked solo only game, which is a great game. I've played that game on stream. It's awesome. I mean, it's not for everybody. Of course, no game is. I obviously have to say that. But I thought it was awesome for whatever that's worth. Shouldn't be much, but I thought it was awesome. I do need to play more of it. Uh, I know. I know I do. There's a campaign. I know I need to play at some point. Uh, but the video didn't get enough likes fast enough for me to play it. So unfortunately, sorry, everybody. That's how, that's how it works. Uh, Friday, though, I have played that. I own that. Uh, that game is garbage, in my opinion. Uh, but again, it's old. Er, not really. 2011, it's not that old. Um, but yeah, for a small little solo only game, uh, I was not impressed by that. I thought it was pretty crappy. Uh, I have not played Warp's Edge. Coffee Roaster I've heard good things about. I don't know what Mar Marquis is. Or Maqui? Maquis? Maquis? I'm sure I'm pronouncing that 100% correct. Uh, Black Sonata I've heard of. Well, there's Final Girl. So Final Girl, I don't know how many I scrolled. I wish there was a number there, but I'm showing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It is the top eighth. It is the eighth highest ranked solo only game. That was pretty quick. We, we came up with some good information there. Oh, I have this game. I have this game, but I have not played it yet. I need to play it on stream, I think, for fun. I have this game. I'm pretty sure I bought this to play at Halloween like two or three years ago. And seeing it here just reminded me it's sitting on my shelf of opportunity. But since it's a small game, it hides itself behind the other larger boxes, I guess. And it uh, just doesn't pop out to me as I walk by it. Uh, <laughs> man, that's solo only also. Oh, hmm, that would make a good uh, daytime afternoon stream like Final Girl does. Oh, I love me some hostage negotiator. Not everyone loves it, but I love Mies Monsters Go Shader. But as you see here, solo only games automatically are, uh, have trouble pushing up high, right? Like Friday, which is always recommended, like, oh my god, it's a solo game, everyone has to play it, blah blah blah. I always saw it on top lists when I was getting into the hobby. People are like, oh, for a solo game, it's amazing, and all this stuff. Um, but that on, that's only like around 500. So like, you know, but under falling skies, there you go. There you go. Uh, White Donkey says, looks like Final Girl has the highest weight of the top eight. So the most crunchiest of the top solo games. And again, the crunchier the game. So here, here's the thing is it's to think about. It's like, not knowing the user base on BGG, but you have to assume. You would assume they're a little more hardcore gamer. But I don't think that's true. Because if we look at something like the Dice Tower, and, and the fan base of the Dice Tower, for example, the, the bigger like YouTube channel, and they're the ones that introduced me to this website, they mention it all the time, and they use it all the time in their top 10 list, their rankings, their everything. So their fan base is very aware of this website. Uh, they're, yeah, they're based on the content and the views and the fan base of the Dice Tower. I don't think it's that hardcore. So maybe a crunchier game has trouble also. So that, so, so Final Girl has maybe three things going against it is what I'm trying to say. Uh, it is a, the box art image on BGG is horrible. Uh, so automatically it loses points. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, 2.44 weight. Uh, I mean, Warp Edge is 2.4, so it's the same. A and this is 2.43. So there's three, so that's not holding it back. That's not holding it back at all. But obviously a less crunchy game will, will help it get to the table, will be easier to learn, to understand, to play, okay? And something that hits the table more means people are enjoying it, having fun, and they start telling their friends, 
They start putting on top lists. Content creators start talking about it. And more people want it, more people buy it. Obviously, a successful Kickstarter helps helps get the word out. Um, but it has things going against it, like it's solo only. It's horror themed, which, you know, horror movies and horror genre has its fan base. But like, come on, it's not, you know, there's a whole bunch of people out there that don't watch horror movies, that don't want to, don't want to show their kids, don't want to watch horror movies with their family. You know what I mean? Board gaming is kind of like a family kind of thing. It's kind of that's like in culture, kind of how it seems it is. Um, you know, because you're a kid, you get family games. Those are the games that are in the most popular department stores. So this game automatically being like horror themed makes it out of that family game category, I think. So that's kind of hurting it. Solo only. And I forget the other thing I was going to say. But it's not crunchy. It's only a 2.44. So I wouldn't consider that crunchy personally, but it is the crunchiest kind of on the solo scale there. Um, why did I just click that? But yeah. But like when I think crunchy, it's like gotta be around a four, you know? Something over a 3.5 all of a sudden becomes like the possibility of being a problem. Up until like 4.5 and, and beyond, you know? Like those get really crunchy usually, but I mean, this is just ratings from, from people rating it, which could be like three people. So who knows? Right? See, it's like 27 people voted on the wait. How, I don't know if you can take that that serious. That's what I mean. All the PGG stuff, it's like such small numbers, such like minimal sample size, that it's so easy for five people to go rate a game and it jump 100 spots. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know how serious to take all this stuff, but yeah. And then when games like Gloomhaven sit at the top for so long, it's like, is it just the hardcore fans that actually go in and interact with the page and the rules mistakes and the ratings and the hype for the game and stuff like that, that make enough signal noise in the database to bump a game up? But the family gamer who really buys like, you know, Catan and plays, you know, Ticket to Ride and stuff that are in way more homes and people are playing way more than Gloomhaven, uh, those people aren't going on BGG and rating things, I don't think. That, that's what I think it comes down to. So you always have to keep that in mind. But that's a whole discussion for another day. But I do find it very fascinating. As I talk about it every now and then, I think it's neat. It's all we have, right? It's the only thing we have to talk about. Uh, Center Isle says, Under Falling Skies is certainly a lot simpler, which leans into that higher rating for BGG and a good reason why I'm less into it. Mm. <laughs> Joseph says, I'm glad I'm not the only one who thinks the core box needs artwork to make it more appealing. Yeah, yeah. Like, who's stopping by and grabbing that off the shelf at their local board game store? No. <laughs> Honestly, I... I... Yeah, I'm a little, uh, yeah, I've talked about it before, I think. But yeah, I'm a little torn with the core box and expansions idea for this game. I really think, I really think the one, one real negative I have against this game that kind of rubs me the wrong way, but again, when I'm playing it, it does not matter. It does not matter. Like when you're playing it, none of what I'm about to say matters. But this whole idea of releasing it in one wave, it's like the Fantasy Flight Games thing that always has bugged me in the hobby. Fantasy Flight Games will design a core set and a cycle with that core set. They play test all the cards together, they design all the cards together, they work on them together, they print them together, and then they separate them into little packs. And then they release the core set. And in their warehouse is sitting a whole bunch of packs, and then they release a little pack, and a little pack, and a little pack, you know. And when all that content could have been all in the same box, yeah, you pay a little bit more, but you wouldn't pay as much more as having it all separated into separate products. And let's not even get into the environmental impact of having all those little card packs with all the extra plastic, and paper, and shipping cost, and gas, and manufacturing, and containers and all that stuff if it was just those cards from those expansion packs only take up like this much space and there is room in the box there always is if that was just included in the box raise it up those cards cost nothing raise it up by ten dollars of the game and just give it all at once 
I don't know. I know there's the marketing thing and hype and, you know, the feed and all that stuff of constantly releasing products. This game, on the other hand, they designed it with a base game. And that's good because it saves on components being reprinted. But really, I think this game should have been a wave one, should have been one game and one box. Give me all the five or six killers, whatever it is, of wave one. Give me all the final girls. Give me all the locations. Just put it in one box. I know the idea of using the outside of the box as a board and all that stuff. Like, maybe that's better environmental and stuff. But still, that's just all that extra shipping when you could have just included all the boards in the box or something like that. Or maybe the, the board could have been have a plastic sleeve and you just slide in the location you're playing and the killer you're playing, you know, and all that stuff's on cards. And you just kind of slide the cards into the, the one board, you know. I think there could have been a way to have sold this product at a cheaper price point, less impact on the environment. Although it wouldn't look as cool on your shelf as all the VHS boxes do. So that's obviously a selling point. That obviously helps with the Kickstarter crowdfunding stuff to make something look pretty without thinking of the consequences after. Um, but I do think it's kind of lame the way everything is stored in separate boxes. I've talked about that before, how it's kind of annoying. How you have to like, you know, if you want to play this final girl, this killer, and this location, I have to like get the box out, take off the top, you know, open in this container, open that container. Like, I really just wish it was all in one box. That's me. And I wish I could have bought Wave 1 in one shot, you know, all in one box. It just would be less confusing for the consumer at retail also. And then you don't have that issue of when they print a box that nobody wants. Then there's that box just sitting on shelf collecting dust. Like, let's say people hate Creech Manor and the Poltergeist. Everyone rates that as the worst one. Then nobody buys it. Then there's a whole bunch printed that are just wasted. That are just garbage. Nobody buys them. They sit there and die, right? The company loses profit. I don't know. But yeah, it's just confusing having this, you know, brown box and then all these expansions. But they're not expansions. They're like required games. So why are they in a separate box? I don't know. But again, if I had them all on my shelf in the pretty VHS looking insert thing, yeah, I'd be like, man, I love this, but I don't, and I don't care to have it. But yeah, I, I just think this is weird. I like the way they tried to do something different. But yeah, I, I don't know. I just think it's kind of lame, to be honest. But that's me. That's me. That's me. What are you guys thinking? What are you guys thinking? Uh, bah, 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 bah. Matthew says, my friendly local game store had just the core box and no scenario boxes for sale. I laughed and thought it would be funny for someone to buy that, not knowing it's unplayable on its own. Yeah, it says on the back, like, they do highlight it in red. I threw those papers away. But they do, it does say on the back, like, you know, this is not a game by itself. You need this, you know, if you're, if you're looking at an expansion, it says on the back. This is not a game in itself. You need a base game. And like, what a nightmare to try to keep those in stock for a store owner, right? Like, somebody comes in, buys all the expansions, and they're trying to, like, you know, they probably buy one core box for every set of expansions. But then what if somebody bought an expansion in another store, and then they come there for that core box? Now the store is trying to, like, keep in stock, like, you know, and it's just a mess. It's just a mess. But obviously, you don't want them to then have five boxes with, like, five sets of dice, five sets of cards, all that stuff. Uh, you know, the action cards. But I really think this game, uh, maybe on Kickstarter, should have been a thing where you buy it all in one wave. But with the retail release should have all been in one box. It should have just like one box at retail release. You know, I really think that was like a bad play. Uh, or everything's just one box. But that's just me. I might be crazy and I'm missing out on something. Maybe that ruins the appeal. Maybe nobody wants the game because then it just blends in. Um, you know, maybe this whole release model, magnetic player boards, is like what made everyone go, oh my god, this is so cool. I don't know. I may be missing something. But yeah, there's, there's my, uh, uh, my, I don't know, that's not really a rant. Uh, that's just my opinion. I don't know. There's my thoughts for today, I guess. Uh... Center Isle says, I strongly disagree with all the content all in one box. A big appeal for this game is that you aren't required to spend $200 to get the box. You yourself purchase the game separately. But I would argue the game probably wouldn't be $200. Because let's be honest, if I put all the components for all of Wave 1, take them all out of the box, lay them on the table, 
it's not $200 worth of components. You know? It honestly could all be put in one box and be like a $80 game, maybe? Maybe? 60? 65 US? Let's be honest. It, it's, it's wooden meeples and cards. And a couple cardboard boards. And again, if you do single boards where you slide in the final girl, you slide in the killer, and you slide in the level, and those are just cards, you know? Like uh, tarot size cards or something. Yeah, you could definitely get this into a $65 US product. All wave one, for sure. And don't tell me you can't. That, that's, that's BS. It's only 200 because it's all separate products. And that revolves more manufacturing, more shipping, the cost of shipping, all that stuff. Yeah, that, that's like, it's silly. Plus the Kickstarter overcharge, you know, all that stuff. But then again, you're paying for shipping. So like, I, I don't know how that it, it all works, but. Yeah, all the final girls do fit in the core box. I don't know when you sleeve them if they do, but yeah. Uh, Edward, the difference is that's using an IP. Slay the Spire is an IP based on a video game. They probably had to pay for that IP, so you have to add that cost to it. Final Girl is not using an IP. It's just ripping off an IP and, and avoiding copyrights. So there's no cost for IP there. So automatically, if you can't compare this with uh, Slay the Spire at all. Unless it's the actual company that owns Slay the Spire making it, but I don't, I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case. But yeah, that's apples and oranges, my friend. You can't, you can't compare those. You can't compare those. And I'm talking at retail. Like, I mean, if this is all in one box, at retail, 65 US. 80 tops, 80 tops. 80 tops. If you do it the way I'm saying, where you have a single board, you know, maybe it's a plastic board, kind of like Trudvang Legends was originally, I don't know if it did it at all, but you know, you slide, you have the plastic and you slide cards in, or you just lay the cards on boards. Like here's my level, you just have one board, and you put your final girl card here, you put your, your villain card here, and your uh, level card, your, your location card. You know, you could do it all on one board, for sure, for sure. Maybe it's dual layer cardboard and you just lay the card in, you know? You lay the card in for the location, the killer, and the, and the final girl. I wonder if they thought about that stuff behind the scenes and like tested that stuff out or not. Mm -mm -mm. All right, is everyone here yet? All right, yeah, I guess we can start. <laughs> All right, we got Creech Manor. Did that buy enough time for everyone to show up? Oh, Dave, David Rath says, my local game store. David, where are you? Oh, USD, USD, okay. Uh, David says, my local game store sells each component for $16 US. All six boxes for series one would cost $96. And I do think if you reduce the components and put them all in one box, you could then get down to the 80, 65 to 80 US, easy. If it's $96 for all six boxes at, at retail, then yes, I, I feel very strongly that that could be done. Yes, you wouldn't need the magnets either, which I know definitely increased the cost for sure. You wouldn't need all the magnet fluff. Yeah, this is my opinion, just my opinion. Again, for what it's worth, just being critical, as I do sometimes when people ask my opinions or thoughts on a product, I like to be open and honest. It's, it, there's no right or wrong. Maybe. It depends what you value, right? We start talking about environment, this is all trash, but yeah. Anyways. All right. This is Creech Manor. Uh, Creech Manor. Supposedly, this Creech Manor copy I have is over 100 years old, but man, I swear it just showed up in my local game store the other day, but I, supposedly this says it's 100, over 100 years old. I mean, BGG says it's 2021. I, I don't know. Something's wrong here. Just kidding. Uh, with the kind of character and historic charm that people love, it is the kind of home where every step, every new room, can call to one's imagination a story from the past. But the stories of Creech Manor are filled with horrifying events, macabre happenings, and supernatural powers beyond human understanding. Go away, 
for evil reigns within. Okay, we're just going to cancel the playthrough because uh, I'm not going in there. I'm just kidding. All right, 10 event cards. We've got setup cards. We've got various tokens. We've got some item cards, tarot cards. Like nothing crazy out of the ordinary here. But we're all playing in one house, which I think is so awesome. So awesome. Special rules, okay? We have one-way movement spaces. A few of the spaces have exits in one direction. There are three of them. We'll look at them shortly. These spaces have white arrows and lines indicating which direction you can move. The spaces are still considered to be adjacent in both directions. You're not allowed to move against an arrow. You can't climb up the tire swing and go back in a window, nor can you go up through the hole in the ceiling in the washroom on the left side of the board. Enemies and victims are also subject to these rules. The rope ladder item, if used, is the only exception and turns a one-way space into a normal space. Hopefully we see that, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's that important. There's also window spaces marked with this little blue, little white, little white inside of a light blue window space here, window icon. Uh, there are new type of space on the Creech Manor location board. There are two window spaces on the right side of the house and one on the left side. Window spaces do not have any special rules, but many terror and event cards will specifically reference them. Okay. We also have the ladder. Cards that refer to the ladder are specifically referring to the ladder on the outside of the building that connects the left exit space and the washroom on the third floor. The ladder, the ladder leading to the attic is artistic in nature only and is never impacted by any game effects. And there's inside and outside. All spaces are considered to be inside except for the three exit spaces which are outside. Obviously it'll reference victims outside, victims inside and all that stuff. You know what I mean? So, let's see what we got here. So it looks like we have fire exits by jumping out the window and going down the tire swing. On the, This is so cool. I, this is my first time actually looking at it. I just literally opened it right before the stream started and slapped it on the board. I haven't even looked at it. So this is awesome. You're getting first impressions here. Uh, okay, so we got exit spaces on the street down here. Okay, they're all connected to each other. And you can get out into this street by jumping out the bathroom window or this third story window. So there's one, two, three, four, five stories. Five stories. That's so cool. Man, I'm getting like video game vibes here big time. Big time video game vibes, right? When you play any, there's so many games. So many games. You play from the side, you know, 2D, you know, 2D games. Even 2.5D, you're playing from the side. And the, and the house is open and you're kind of like walking around rooms. It's like bringing me back to Super Nintendo days, you know, Nintendo days. Uh, NES, NES and Super NES days. Feels like I'm looking at a, a video game map in Nintendo Power. Anybody? Anybody? Uh, Side-scrolling platformer. Yes, 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 yes. Man. <laughs> this is awesome. This is awesome. All right. Uh, over here, we have, uh, it looks like another bathroom. Looks like another bathroom. And in this one, you can go out the ladder, down the ladder. So you can go up or down the ladder, right? But the tire swing, you can't go up it because there's the arrows. So that makes sense to me. This is the ladder they're talking about to ignore for artistic purposes. There's nothing there, don't worry about it. When it, when it talks about the ladder, it only means this one. We have a garage. We can search the garage. Uh, trophy room, that's cool. We have a closet up here we can search. We have the attic we can search. I'm only seeing three search spaces, right? Or am I blind? That trophy room makes me keep looking at it like it's a searchable room, but it's just like the orange color to it. Maybe the fire kind of draws my eyes, making it think it's like that. But I'm only seeing three search spaces, unless I'm crazy. Elevator action? Oh, man. <laughs> awesome. Oh, okay. Macabre. I always say it wrong, I know. Uh, I know I say it wrong. Uh, it's macabre. Scarecrows in Halloween protect fields of corn on macabre. What? Is it just macabre? Okay, cool. All right, all right. Uh, 
Okay. I think we're good with Creech Manor, right? I think we're good. Creech Manor, we're all on the same page. Anyone? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Before we move on to the Poltergeist. Oh, there's coffee. Oh, thanks, Mark. <laughs> what do you mean I can't jump back up into the third story window? Come on. <laughs> uh, Mr. Suitcase says, Poltergeist probably feels different than most other killers because it cannot be harmed. Hey, spoilers, I'm just about to read that, okay? Whoa, you just ruined the ending of the movie. No, I'm just joking. Uh, Victory is achieved in a different way, rescuing the child. We're about to get into that. I am very interested. I remember when I first streamed this on the channel, I don't know when that was, a year ago or whatever, a months ago, eight months, something like that. I don't remember. Uh, you can find those videos in the playlist down in the video description. Um, but I remember this one was also mentioned. I know Frightmare on Maple Lane or whatever it was called. That was like the most mentioned one that people loved. But I remember people mentioning this one that is cool, like really different, really cool. That's, that's what I took away from that. I, I don't remember if that was word for word what was said, but that was the vibe I got. And I made like a mental note was like, okay, I'll check that one out second of the three I was missing. So the last one, I don't even remember what it is, but that's the one we'll play probably next week or something. Um, and then we'll finish off wave one. And then I will not touch this game until I get my wave two play mat in because I refuse to not be playing this on a play mat. Uh, I feel very dirty not doing that, uh, but that's just me. After playing Hostage Negotiator on a playmat, I feel like I'm too good to play without one, but we're still playing on Neoprene, so we're good. But yeah, um, but we'll just put it on hold until like Wave 2 stuff comes. I think. Alright. How do you fight the Poltergeist? Let me ask you something. How does one fight something you cannot see? It is simple, you don't. You get the hell out of there and you do not look back. You do not turn back, you do not do anything but run. If you do, it will ruin you. Mentally, physically, and emotionally. Then it will kill you. <laughs> Testimony from a former Creech Manor groundskeeper. All right. So we have the usual stuff. We got finale cards, dark power cards. I don't play with the epic dark power card. I'm not that hardcore yet. Or I don't know if I'll ever be. But I don't play with this one in the options. Okay. This like gives you a chance that it's like really nuts. Uh, we're gonna, you guys are going to vote which final girl we're going to play with today for our first playthrough of this one. Uh, we get the killer board and some item cards. Oh, two item cards. Oh, yeah. Ah, yes. Two item cards. We got to rescue this girl, right? Uh, and then I was like, wait, this is not a location. Why do we have item cards? Uh, then we have 16 tarot cards. Okay. All right. That's, that's a component rundown. Special setup. Set up the game normal with the following changes to the item decks when playing with Poltergeist. I think we'll go through this when we get to that point in setup. Just to make sure we do it right. Special rules, though, let's read this. The poltergeist has no health and cannot be attacked. If you notice here, if you notice here, there is no health bar. No health bar. WTF. Okay. Uh, it cannot be attacked, damaged, or killed. So we can't win. So this is going to be the endless stream. No, we'll, we'll end it when we die, I guess. <laughs> Ignore any effects that would damage the poltergeist. Note. Action cards that inflict damage may still be useful against some of the Poltergeist Terror cards. So that seems like it's rare. So, Furious Strike, Critical Blow, like, we don't care about those that much. I like the way that's going to change up purchasing and, and card value ratings, you know what I mean? Like, how highly we value certain cards. I love the way it changes... Sometimes based on what's going on in a scenario, but then sometimes like right from the jump, you're like, okay, I have to change up what I'm focused on in this one and how I value certain action cards. Same thing we had in Hosh Negotiator as we changed the uh, Hosh's Taker or whatever. I like that. Uh, all right. Since the Poltergeist cannot be attacked, you do not win against her in the normal way. Instead, the only way to win against the Poltergeist is to find Carolyn and save her by reaching an exit space while she's with you. So I have Carolyn here. Let's take a look at Carolyn. But Mr. Floppy said to hide. <laughs> All right. So she takes up a hand slot because you have to hold her hand, I guess. 
as you drag her around the scenario. So they were playing a, an escort quest, right? We, we have someone lug, like lugging us down here. There better not be many two-handed weapons in this one. Oh, I see one right now, actually, from the from one of the final girls. Oh no. <laughs> When Carolyn joins you, remove all minor dark power cards from the game. Okay. You must escape with Carolyn to win the game. Carolyn cannot be killed or discarded for any reason. You cannot place her in your backpack. <laughs> Here, get, get in this, get in the backpack. Shh. Just stay back there. Shh. No, we can't roll her up and stuff her in a backpack. Supposedly that's frowned upon. Supposedly. So I wish someone told me that when my daughter was younger. Jeez. Anyways. Just kidding. Just kidding. I'm kidding. All right. If the forgetting something epic dark power is revealed, in addition to finding and saving Carolyn, you will also have to find her stuffed friend, Mr. Floppy. That looks like Carolyn's doll. All right. I need to see this card. What is it called? Forget something. What the heck? Epi oh, Epic Dark Power. Sorry, I'm not playing with the Epic Dark Power, right? That was the card I said I took out, right? I'm looking through tarot cards like I know what I'm doing. Uh, epic Dark Power is the card I, I'm not, I don't even have it out on the table. Okay, so let's forget that. That's not going to happen in our playthrough today. Okay, good to know, good to know. But just so you know, Mr. Floppy's there. If, if the dark power has been revealed, you may remove this item from the game to ignore the effects of Carolyn, where are you? Mario! Uh, if this card is discarded for any reason, shuffle it into the nearest item deck. <sighs> Carolyn riding around like Yoda in a backpack. Yes! This is what we need. We need to find the Yoda backpack. Baby Yoda backpack. All right. This is the way. All right. Uh, let's see. Carolyn may never be discarded or removed from the game by any game effect doing so should be ignored. Oh, and any game effect doing so should be ignored. However, Carolyn may get shuffled back. Oh, no, no, no. However, Carolyn may get shuffled back into the item deck, which is perfectly normal. That's not normal. You know how hard it is to search in this game and like find things? Like you just be happy when you get a couple items in a game. But sometimes there's like search problems. Man, this would suck on that last one. Uh, or the one with the traps in the deck. The circus. Also that last one we played. Going inside of a house. You know, you can't go in a certain house if there's people in there. And to try to search, it's like, holy. Yeah, no thanks. Yeah, this one can, the difficulty can be cranked up if you have trouble searching. Especially if she gets shuffled back in. Okay. Mr. Floppy has an effect that can be used if it's discarded, but cannot be used until dark power is revealed. Mr. Floppy can never be discarded due to a game effect before dark power is revealed, or if the freaking something epic dark power is in play. All right, those are our special rules. Nothing too crazy, other than the killer doesn't work the same. Interesting. Interesting. All right, let's get set up, I guess. Uh, let's get set up. Yeah, Floppy takes up another hand slot. But you can stuff Floppy in the backpack, though. It doesn't say you can't. So that's not bad. Okay. So automatically, she's moving for two, attacking for one. Oh, Dark Power comes out on the second level. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, and her default power is... Uh, you know, killer, closest killer or victim, moving and attacking. Oh no, okay. Yeah, this is gonna be different. Okay. All right. Um, one sec. Let's have to just double check. Let's try to do it in some sort of order. Uh, okay, did that part. Next is the tarot cards. Just gonna shuffle these. And then we need 10 tarot cards. 
I am excited to try this one though. I am very excited. I was looking forward to it all week. And I was like, ah, I'll play it off stream. And I was like, no, I'm not playing it off stream. Once I read it, I was like, I, I want to play this on stream. I want to see how the hell this works. So I don't expect to win today. But if we do, <laughs> I don't even know. I, I don't feel confident trying to find Carolyn and getting her out of here. Just because the search mechanic frustrates me sometimes. Yeah, nothing too crazy, except half the game works differently. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Alright, so... We need ten of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, set the rest aside. Okay. Uh, vents. Shuffle that up. Okay, we'll reveal one of those last, right? Setup cards. Let's do. Oh, let's do the item cards. Let's do the item cards. Uh, so there's a special setup for this one. Uh, okay. Set up the game as normal with the following changes to item decks while playing with the poltergeist. The Carolyn and Mr. Floppy item cards will always be included in the game, but neither will ever start the game face up on an item deck. Ah, okay, okay. Create the decks as follows. Using your own method if you want, just make sure the following that statement is the previous statement is true. Okay, okay, okay. And we'll need to mess with it because of the items of the final girls. Yes, I open them and use them right away, because that's just how I roll. Um but yeah. I think it's more fun. Okay, uh, so let's start a poll because we are about to find out who we're gonna play and You guys can vote. I will talk about each final girl in a second um, And then you guys can vote on which one we're playing today So the first one in the poll and the polls in the live chat if you're watching live we have Alice Automatically when I see Alice's special item that I'm going to shuffle in the deck and make sure it's in the deck for the game Whether we see it or not, it's a whole different story um, But automatically because she comes with a shotgun, I instantly want to play with her But again, we shouldn't worry about that because we may never see that item. So let's just talk about Alice. She's only got four health She does have two ways of healing right there and getting time Take a cost two or less action card move up to two spaces move one space Okay, it's gonna take six rescues to even see her ability. So it's a little tougher, but it's probably really powerful Choose one named action card for the remainder of the game. Whenever you play that named action card, always roll exactly five dice regardless of the horror level or any other modifiers. That is awesome. So if you feel like at that point in the game, you need to sprint a lot, for example, you'll always be rolling five dice on a sprint. Or if you want to get risky, something that you see less of, you know, maybe you're like, I need to do the killing blow with a critical blow. You could just name that and you'll always be rolling five dice for it, even though you may only use it once or twice or never. Um, so I like I like this. This is really cool. And then for each additional victim you save, you recover health, which makes sense. She's four health. So usually they have some healing. Um, yeah, I'm a little scared of the four health and I'm scared that we'll never get to this because yeah, we need to save six. So that's a little rough, but that's Alice. If we want to play, play with Alice, I'm totally down. We can play with whoever, um, but let's look at Selena. Uh, she is not happy for one. She has six health only. Oh, right there. My favorite symbol in the whole game, reducing the terror or horror level, whatever it's called, the horror rating. Uh, we can get time, which is great. Move a space and take a search action card. Seems good. Searching seems like it might be important. And again, six health. Okay. And we can get to her ability quicker because it's uh, only four rescues to do it. But let's see, it's probably not as good. When resolving a search action card, roll two additional dice. Yeah, she was definitely built for this one, right? If we have to search for uh, Carolyn, right? She's going to be in the decks. We'll have to search at least, at least twice, if not like until the end of the game trying to find this girl. Uh, for each additional victim saved, re re receive two extra time, which, yeah, that's great. Okay, and what, what's Selena's fun little item? <laughs> of course, searching for items, they give her a flashlight. Come on, man. <laughs> Once per action phase, you may look at the top card of the terror deck, leave it on top, or place it at the bottom of the deck. You may discard this card while on a search space to take the top item card. Only Selena may use this item. So we'll shuffle that in. That'll be for sure in the deck somewhere. Um, you know, if we take whichever one we take. And that takes up no hand slots, but it's not a weapon, right? 
If we want to increase our weapons, Alice's shotgun, I'll shuffle in there. And it does asterisk damage. Alice's shotgun cannot modify an action card and must be used without one. Once per turn, you may discard one card from your hand, roll six dice, deal damage to each enemy in your space for each star rolled. If at least half of the dice are blank, discard Alice's shotgun. Ooh, yeah, that's not as cool as I thought it was. I mean, it could be amazing, but that is like a luck fest. Wow. But it's fun. Thematically, that's hilarious. The gun could just like jam up, you know? Huh. I don't know how I feel about that. But anyways, you guys can vote. Which one are we playing? Which one are we playing? Because we need to know before we do the items. All right, I'll leave that for a minute while I sip on some more coffee. All right, thank you everyone that voted. I'm closing the poll. Also, we're waiting for the results. Make sure you click that like button. Helps other people find the video and the stream on YouTube. Much appreciated. If you're liking what you're watching. If you're not, why are you here? <laughs> Go away. Go away if I'm frustrating you. All right. Uh, Edward says, don't need a gun versus this ghost, Winky. It did say there was some stuff you need to like fight in the deck. If those are in the deck, I don't know because we don't use the whole deck. You know, maybe we see stuff, maybe we don't. That's interesting. Yeah, it's weird. I know, I'm, I'm just automatically go to the weapons because I'm so used to it in this game, right? I always feel like you need a weapon to win, but yeah, that's different this time, right? Okay, it says 86% voted for Selena. Okay, I'm down. I am down. Sorry, Alice. You're going to the box to collect dust and may, ne may never see play ever. All right, sorry, sorry, Alice. Okay, Selena. Selena's our final girl. She's got six health. So you need to put five hearts on the board here. Okay. And our sixth one will be one of these. We'll choose randomly in a second. Okay. Um, but let's do the items. So these are all in for sure. So we need a total of 12, right? So we need nine more. I'm going to shuffle the item deck here. And we'll get nine from here to start. And again, stop me if you think I'm doing it wrong. Whoops. Uh, but I think this will get us there. Okay. So we're going to get nine from here. Out of the regular items from Creech Manor. Hopefully we find lots of good stuff in here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Look how many are not in the playthrough. Okay, to change it up. I like that. Okay. Then we're going to put the flashlight in here. Okay. We're going to put the flashlight in there. Brian, it's Friday. I usually go out on Friday night and, and you know, explore my feminine side usually. I get all, all dressed up, go out for the evening. It's my, it's my getaway every week, so yeah. This makes sense to, to you know, play my, my inner final girl on stream. Uh... Having the shotgun does mean that you'd always have a weapon to use for horror cards, even if you don't have action cards because you aren't buying them. Hmm. Ah, true, true, true. True, yeah. Yeah, I like that. But then again, the, the chance... I guess even those other cards could miss or whatever. Okay, so out of these cards, we're going to get our top card, okay? We're going to do it like this. We'll just do one, two, three. Those are going to be the top of the item decks, okay? Shannon, thank you for subscribing. Okay. Then we're going to take Mr. Floppy, and we're going to take Carolyn, right? Because we need to shuffle them in the decks that aren't on the top cards, right? So this is, in my, in my head, this works. And then also the flashlight's in here, but it could be on the top or it could be in the decks, whatever. Whatever. 
<laughs> Ryan says, nice revenge reply there. It, that gave me so many images I did not need. Yeah, just picture me getting my dress on, shaving my legs every Friday. Just for you, Brian. Just for you, buddy. <laughs> just picture that Gandalf wig I wear with the gray hair, but I, I got a blonde one. Just picture that on me. If that doesn't give you nightmares, I don't know what would. <laughs> okay, uh, so we're going to put you four cards in each pile, right? So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then, oh, oh, regular flashlight. Once per action phase, for one time, you may look at the top card of the tarot deck, leave it in place. Okay, so hers is just a souped up version of that. I see, I see. Yeah, usually it's like that, right? Oh, wow. Selena's flashlight right beside it. Okay, interesting. So this is garage, attic, and lucky rabbit's foot. Discard during the action phase to make a horror roll. For each success, choose one of the following. You get two time, you heal one, you drop down the horror, and you get to move a space. So you choose whichever one of those four things you want. During the action phase, make a horror roll. Huh. I'm assuming you can modify that, right? Yeah. During the action phase, threes and fours are successes. Yeah. Interesting. That's a cool item, actually. And there's no downside. You, d you don't get hurt or anything for fails and stuff. I have that question, too. How does this thing work? <laughs> what the hell? All right. Uh, let's do this setup, I guess. Dan says, Rob, presentable streamer, upper body, final girl under the table where camera light won't shine. <laughs> you guys are funny. All right. Uh, this is our setup. The dead zone. Okay. So we start in the attic. Okay, that's good for searching, right? Uh, and the killer starts in uh, the bathroom, it looks like. Okay. So killer here. We're in the attic. Okay, let's go. Two here. Two here. Come on. All right. Two chilling in the ballroom. Two, one, 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 two, two. All right, I think we're good. I think we're good. Double check me, I may have messed up. I do that sometimes. Okay. Um, oh yeah, let's do, oh yeah, we only get one of these. Oh, also another thing. I, I don't know why I never noticed it before. Oh, I don't have the rule book, it's fine. Uh, oh yeah, I do. Oh, I do. I never know what is in these tokens. Uh, whoops. I never knew what, what the odds are on these tokens for things to happen. But today when I was browsing through rules, I normally scrub over this section because I feel like I fully understand it uh, when I'm refreshing myself on the game. But I guess I just, I guess I just forgot that the final health token, it says right there in the first line, it's on the top right. There are nine, here, maybe I can make it bigger. There are nine final health tokens, three of which have health icons on the back. One, a two, and a three, the rest are blank. So six blanks, there's a one, I didn't know there was a three for sure. I, I don't think I've ever seen it that I remember. Um, 
But I have seen the one and two, but I didn't know. I thought there was more ones, but there's literally only one one and one two. So I never knew the odds before. And on stream, I was forget to look and I don't want to flip them, you know. Um, but yeah, there it is right in the rules. Derp, 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 derp. Okay. So let's uh, put them in some kind of uh, little order there. Okay. Uh, we're going to roll a die if I can find such things. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we're putting this is only for us. Only for us, right? We got a five. One, two, three, four, five. One in the middle. Okay, then I'm gonna take these very carefully and put them just I guess over here somewhere. Okay. Okay, I don't know if we'll ever need them, but they're there. Okay. Um, set up. That's what we're doing. Um, we did the items. We did the setup of location. We just did this. We did the health, bloodlust marker on the bottom of the track, yeah. Time marker's on six. Second killer meeple is on, uh, so she's got a three whore. And it says up there, the poltergeist has no health and cannot be affected. Or, or sorry, cannot be attacked. Sorry, very small. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we start on three. Uh, I like that. Normally it's four, right? Um, oh, now we draw our event. We draw our event. All right, our first event is Ghost Hunters. The EMF readings are off the charts. Jackpot. Replace the three victims closest to you, or as many as able, with spe the special victims meeples. Uh, these victims will not follow you until one of them has been killed. Each time one of these victims is killed, an extra bloodlust? Yeah, this sucks. This sucks. Place the three victims closest to you. So definitely these two. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, it's one of these. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. This is crazy. Okay. So it plays the three closest to you with the special victim meeples. These victims will not follow you until one of them has been killed. That sucks to have your closest victims. You can't even move them, but that's fine. And then extra bloodlust, which means it's going to get crazy extra fast. Oh, at least only three of them can get killed. But now saving the other two. Once one's killed, like, now I want to get the other two out as fast as possible. But that's kind of lame. Uh, okay. I think we're good to start. I'm pretty sure. All right. What are we doing? What are we doing? I mean, we can actually focus on turn one and get us to rolling three dice. I might double focus. I need to buy a search while I'm in the searchable attic. Uh, and yeah, I might just do that. Focus, chill in the attic, and search. 
And I feel like I want the Lucky Rabbit's foot, but that's in the closet, which is where these guys are. The attic is... Uh, oh, attic is my flashlight. Yeah, yeah, I want that, right? I was thinking that, Edward, but it's the Ghost Hunters. So I feel like this is, is not the Ghostbusters. There's only three of them. Because there's four Ghostbusters. Uh, this is probably some joke on some TV show or something or some movie. Where there's... Because, I mean, come on. The, the, the text says... You know, the text uh, are the rules around them. That doesn't fit the Ghostbusters, okay? Uh, no. No, no, no. The Ghostbusters wouldn't be scared, okay? They would just come in and wreck the poltergeist and we win, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, there are only three now left, aren't there? Listen, nothing ever happened past the first two movies from the 80s, okay? Those are the Ghostbusters in my mind. Anything else, not valid, okay? Yes, I did watch that latest movie. Uh, yeah. I don't think this game was trying to match up to current times of Ghostbusters. No, sorry. N not a Ghostbuster card. All right. Okay. Yep, let's focus. I don't know. We only roll two dice, right? Uh, yep. We're going to pitch two cards. And we're going to lose the time. And we're going to drop. Okay, and we're going to focus again. Huh. Now... Uh, definitely we have one success. We lose a time. Yeah, I should put these in. I mean, that's probably bad too. I'm trying to think, what would I have? I would have seven. And no cards. I could buy two searches. A close call and a sprint or something. I mean, I could buy a distraction, a search. If, like, I could search the attic out, it would be awesome. But if I don't have many cards in hand, it doesn't work that well. But then if I can get this flashlight, if I can get this flashlight, that'll help me, right? You may discard this card while on a search space to take the top item card. I mean, that's probably what I do, right? Is just get this thing to help me... Just get through the deck faster? I, I, like, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm, like, lost. Hopefully this girl is not hiding in the garage. That's all I'll have to say. Yeah, I'm gonna pitch these. And we'll do the two successes on the focus. Uh, so we'll go up to seven. And we'll drop down to green. But we know it's going to raise up like right after, I'm sure. But this might have been a little playing too hard on the first turn, though. Okay. Uh, but. So, center aisle, how, how many, if I discarded those two cards, okay, Mark, if I discarded those two cards for two time, and I took the one success off focus, okay, if I took this success, how, how much time would I have to spend in the planning phase right now? And instead, if I toss these two cards on here, and instead went up two time, would it be exactly the same? Are you sure? Are you sure? So I was at five, right? I was at five. So if I take this uh, single success, I lose a time. 
I lose the time down to four, okay? And I drop down to here. Now if I toss these for two, I go up to six. That seems like one less than the way I played it. Hmm, I'm not sure your math is the same as mine unless I'm completely misunderstanding something, which I could be. But I feel like I quickly thought about my head as if I'm gaining two instead of losing one, I'm kind of like up three. So I'm at seven, right? Yeah. Right? Don't come in here and tell me there's only one way to play this game and your way is correct. I'm not a fan of that. I know you don't, I know you don't mean harm. I know you're trying to help, but I, I hate when people just blanket statement. They're like, you can only do this one way. You never should play this this way. It's obvious to only do this. This is not true. Not true in this game for sure. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I definitely go to seven. What I was debating was not doing that because I wanted to have cards still in hand. I know I could have pitched the two walks for two time, but in my head, the option was, the option was to um, either go to four in the planning with two walks for next turn, just to have cards to pitch to help the search, or, 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 I go to seven by pitching them I didn't even take it as an option to hold them in pitch because the numbers aren't the same. Dan says, get distraction in two searches. I am debating that. The only problem is I have no cards in hand now, right? So do I just take a turn where I don't, because I, I don't want to play distraction and search and all that stuff. Because because I'm getting search, I don't like just whiffing on the search because you lose horror, right? So if I really want an item, let's say I roll no successes, and I really want an item, uh, get, I lose two horror, and then I lose two time. That's like the very bad. This is not worth the item, right? That's not worth the two time I spent. This is like very punishing. It, it makes item cards and searching not worth it. This is why searching this game really rubs me the wrong way. Like, you think it's cheap and easy to search, but it's like it's not really. Because even trying to get a success on it, is like you're still losing time and getting the item card. It's like this makes it like kind of worth it. It's just like a very costly, very, very costly, right? Uh, yeah, so in my mind, I'm taking search, really valuing search high, and I don't want to fail it. And if that's the case, either I buy the searches and I just sit and wait till I get some of my free cards back next time to pitch, or, or, I just buy some like close calls, you know, and, and kind of like, maybe like this, maybe like this. And, the, and then what I do is do a distraction, because uh, even on the distraction, if I fail, yes, losing four time is horrible but I can drop uh, my horror, which I'm assuming it's gonna go up again. And if I have more dice on my search, we're, we're rolling, right? Then I have these two to pitch or use for their ability. So is that seven? Did I do that right? Yes, this is seven. I think I'm gonna do this. Is that what you said, uh, Dan? Get distraction, two searches? No, yeah, so Dan's asking. Uh, I think I'm gonna go one search, distraction and two close calls. Uh, Pips in Space says, so you're allowed to purchase two of the same card? It's not specifically mentioned in the rules, but I always feel like if I did it, it was doing something wrong. No, you can do it if you have the money. No, you can do it. It's just the question of with the buying two of the same card is then you're either holding one in hand or you're doing them both at the same time. And then because of the cooldown mechanic of them not going back into the market right away means like if you, you're not going to see it if you need it for the next turn. Otherwise, you're holding it, you know? So sometimes it's nice not to buy two of the same card unless you're really going all in on that that turn. But then you're kind of screwed because then the card's on cooldown until, you know, so it's like a balance. So whenever I go to buy two cards, it's not that I feel like I'm doing something wrong because there is balance to it. So you might think, oh, that's overpowered to buy two cards at once, but it's not. 
because now those two cards are tied up and either you're not using them or they're on cooldown and then you can't get them back as quick. So I really think it's balanced, to be honest. So you shouldn't feel like you're doing anything wrong. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't take this die out of there. Okay. Uh, so that's done. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go with these cards, I think. Yeah. Alright. Done. I just go back into the store. Okay. Next. Killer phase. Resolve the killer action. So its movement is two. Uh, hmm. So I guess one, two is the closest. Because it can't, it can't go up there because this is a, an arrow going down, right? I think this is where it goes. Because there's no like way to get into this one from there. So uh, we'll kill this one. Uh, Bloodlust up one. And that, oh yeah, duh. Uh, I should have known that already. Yeah, that sucks. Okay, and now tear card. Oh, what the hell? Corporeal form. A behemoth appears. Is this a token? I don't... Yeah, there's no token. Uh, I don't know why that's a token there. A behemoth appears. You may play action cards that inflict damage if you wish. Oh no! Oh no! So right away I need to fight things and I don't have fight cards. Whoopsie! <laughs> okay, so I can't fight it, right? Uh, if the beam is still alive, I take damage equal to the killer's attack value plus one. Okay. Uh, that is uh, two. So I just lost two health. Oh, I may defend. Well, of course I don't have defense cards yet. Uh, man, I'm definitely going to get messed up by this one, like wrecked. Uh, playing blind for sure. Uh, if you take damage, discard an item of your choice. I have none. And then the behemoth disappears. What the hell is going on here? That's interesting. Okay, that's a thing. Okay, that's a thing. I know it did mention I might need attack cards against some of its terror cards. Uh, okay. Wow. Uh, wow. Okay, we're, we're off to a great start here. Okay. Uh, victim was killed. There's no one to panic in the killer's space. And then the upkeep phase, uh, finale, rearrange items, nothing, right? Okay, playing action cards. Okay, let's do distraction. You can use the extra health tokens to track his health. Uh, but he, he disappears, right? He's just like a one-time fight. He just has two health. Yeah, it's just a one-time card. He's gone now. So I don't, I don't think we need to track. It's just like if we had an attack card, if we could kill him, then we don't have to deal with him. Hey, Jack, how's it going? I'm back. <laughs> All right, we got one success, which leads us to drop this by one and increase our time to seven. I forgot to reset it. Okay, now we're going to search with three dice. We got two close calls in hand. Oh, no. Okay, we are... Ooh. Do we risk it? Do I reroll all dice for two time? I think so. Let's reroll them all. That's what we do. Yeah. Best close call ever. All right. Uh, so this will take the top two item cards of your space and choose one. Place the other one on top, face up, or underneath, face down, and then we lose a time. Okay. 
Uh, the attic, right? Okay, we're in the attic. Well, that's not a little girl. I'm assuming I just take the flashlight and then I bury the first aid kit. Any, 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 uh, anyone think otherwise? Anyone think otherwise? Cause like, I'm, I'm trying to be really aggressive and search for this, uh, Carolyn, the little girl, right? And then the flashlight, if I take the flashlight, I can pitch it right away to get the top item card from the deck in this room, right? Like if I just want to get the attic searched and, and get out of here and not have to really come back, uh, I get it, I get it done. I don't know. Yeah, I can I can peek I can peek at the terror deck once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can peek at the terror deck. Yeah, of course. Of course I can use the flashlight for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like to me it's like I can't win unless I find the little girl. So like Messing with the terror deck for the rest of the game with the flashlight doesn't seem that great when I can't win unless I find the girl, right? If I had the girl and then I found the flashlight, oh yeah, we'd be rolling. But that's not the way the cards were dealt this time, right? Yeah, I'll take the flashlight, bury the first aid kit. Okay, so remember, the attic has a first aid kit on the bottom. So we only need to see the next two cards to have the attic fully searched. Okay. Uh, then I will look at the top of the terror deck. Once per action phase, you may look at the top of the terror deck, leave it on the top, or place it at the bottom. Ho oh, oh. ho! I know where this is going. In the paper shredder. Oh wait! If there are no victims on the board, discard and draw the next terror card. Hmm. But there are victims. Yeah, yeah. I, I, this goes on the bottom, right? Okay, that's it, I think. Planning we have, I mean, I can pitch this, but I think I keep it. No, maybe I pitch it to go to five. Get a search and um, a search and a, man. I have four, four can get me a search. And like maybe a guard, we use a guard just to hold if that's the crazy stuff that's going to happen in the deck. I could pitch this and just buy another distraction and a search. Yeah, I, I know keeping it sounds cool, but it's like if it can, it can change my turn based on what I buy, right? I just really need search. And the rest, I guess, is fine. Yeah, okay, I'll keep, I'll keep. Uh, okay, so I'm spending four. Search. Maybe sprint. Or guard. I feel like it's sprint, because we do have to rescue some hostages. Yeah, let's do sprint. Okay. I really want a distraction though. But we might be okay, but I don't know. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's ten in this game, right? Is ten the limit? Does it say on here? I think it's ten. Does anyone know in the chat? Is it a hard 10 in this game or is it a hard 8? I can't remember. Playing too many games. Playing Arkham Horror last night. It's 10? Okay, perfect. Yeah, Arkham Horror was 8 yesterday we were playing. Uh, it's hard to keep all those numbers straight. <laughs> Every game is different. Okay, 10. All right. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so we're good, we're good. Perfect. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Mr. Suitcase is lead playtester. Oh, so anything wrong with the game I can rip on you for? Oh, okay, good to know. You should never announce that, by the way. 
because then you're a target. You're a target for all my criticism. So if I don't like anything in the game, 100% you are to blame. <laughs> awesome. Okay. <laughs> but I'm off to a work meeting in 10 minutes. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> okay. So I'll, I'll wait till you leave and then I'll talk bad about you. Oh, is that okay, Mr. Suitcase? All right. Too bad. All right. Final girl is going to do her action. Oh, yeah. We reset to six. I always forget. Uh, or sorry, the killer. Sorry. Killer girl resolve killer action. Uh, I think it's this way. And then kill. And this goes up and we reveal dark power already. Eternal despair. Whenever you resolve a horror roll, Lose a time for every one showing on a die after rerolls. Are you serious? This is a rough one. Oh man. Uh, all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me draw one of these. <laughs> Nothing is as it seems. If Carolyn is with you, discard and draw the next tarot card. Otherwise, Shuffle each item deck. And oh! This could be good actually for us. I know Bloodlust going up twice sucks. It does suck. But I would not be mad if we found Carolyn. If Carolyn is with you, discard and draw the next tarot card. She's not. Otherwise, shuffle each item deck and reveal the top card of each. So that does suck because now the first aid kit, which we think is on the bottom, might end up being in like the next cards in the attic. So this kind of sucks, but it might be good. It might be good. Okay, I'm going to flip these. So rabbit's foot might not be an option. Okay. Poltergeist has three whore. Did I miss something? Poltergeist has three whore. What do you mean? Upper left corner. This, right? Wait, uh, oh. I, I know, we talked about that during setup. Please give me more information, low do film. I'm not sure why you're pointing that out right now, halfway through the game. Not halfway. We're definitely not halfway. We're like two turns in. Sorry. Uh, okay. Reveal top. Oh, come on. Boo. Flashlight again. All right. Yeah, I can luck out here, but I don't feel that's going to happen. Actually, let me pull this down a bit because I can't see the items on the screen. And then we can probably just pull this down a bit too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll just put these here. Da, 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 da. You didn't move the horror, you only moved an attack. Huh? You didn't move the horror. Why would I move the horror? Its ability right here is go after the closest final girl victim, move two spaces in our case, because the bloodlust token, and then attack once, doing one damage. I, I don't understand how this rating is only for setup. This rating is only for setup, if this is what you're talking about. I ignore this completely after setup. This just tells you where this starts. And it started on three at the beginning of our game. I since lowered it. But after that, you never use this. So, uh, yeah. So I think you need to just go back to the rules and carefully read through setup again because I think you misunderstood something for sure. <laughs> but if you learn something and now your next playthrough is correct, I feel good because, you know, we helped each other out here. So, yeah, no worries, no worries. I don't, I don't understand. What are you doing then? If, if you're reading this as a three, what are you saying? I'm supposed to raise this by three every time? If that's the case, we would lose really, really fast. 
So I think you might have been playing on hard mode, like like ridiculously broken hard mode. I, I don't I don't know. But yeah, anyways. All right. Revealing the top. Oh, we found a dirty old revolver. Old house, old gun, of course. The old revolver may only modify the weak attack action card. Okay, that's not a little girl. Uh, that's not a little girl. But now we know there's a gun in here and a first aid kit, but we don't know the last card. Oh, you played it wrong. Uh oh. That's all good. It's all good. If you got help by coming here, that is, that is good. It's all good. We all learn. No one's perfect. No one's perfect. All right. Okay, let's do this one. Padlock. To keep something in or out, place the padlock token between any two rooms. Only you and the victims moving with you may move through the padlock. If an enemy attacks while in a room adjacent to the padlock, ignore the attack and remove the padlock token instead. This is like a little barricade kind of idea. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So in this one, we know there's a rabbit foot and a padlock and two cards that are unknown. In this one, three cards are unknown. We only know the flashlight. In this one, it's a gun and a first aid kit and one unknown card. And we didn't find Carolyn or Mr. Floppy, so we didn't get any bloodlust, so that's kind, kind of good. And we got some more card knowledge, I guess, but we may have just buried Mr. Floppy and Carolyn even further down in the bottom of the decks. I don't know. Oh, man. <laughs> Kanji says, you're searching in an old house for a lost child and you find a dirty old gun hanging about with bullets. I'm calling child services. <laughs> Ding dong. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oh, don't question my parenting. All right. Yeah, don't forget the three men walking around searching for ghosts. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Okay. Uh, what's next? What are we doing? That's terror card. A uh, victim was killed, but no one's in their space to panic. Upkeep. No, we're good. All right, now what are we doing? Do I want the old revolver? Not really, right? But I, I want to know the other card that's in the deck, but like, if I do get the two search, I could just pull the first aid kit. This is, this is set me back big time, I think. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. At least horror didn't go up. That's nice. Could have, though, if we revealed... Carolyn or Mr. Floppy would have gone up twice. <laughs> so we got lucky there. All right. Do I give up on the attic and play the odds that that one card left in the attic is not Carolyn? Dan says you can use the flashlight and then search to finish with that location. Uh... Only if I get two successes on the search, though. That's the problem, right? Because remember, the search only lets me look at two cards if I get two successes. Yeah, the flashlight I didn't use last turn, but I maybe should have. Uh, but I thought I'd push my luck because I was going to be in the room anyway. And I thought we could get one more tarot card use out of it. I shouldn't. I should have just used it right away like I was talking about. I should have just did it, right? So then I would have known that last card, I think, right? Or is there, was there two cards I didn't know? No, there was two cards I didn't know. So I still wouldn't have been able to finish it off. But again, now the first aid kit that we knew could be the second card in. So I, there's no guarantee I see all three cards uh, this round. Yeah, I'm thinking I play the odds and I just leave this place. And if Carolyn's in there, uh, oh well. But like... I, I need to search these two, maybe. I don't know. But I mean, Carolyn could be that last card, and then we find her, and then we're like rolling, right? But I don't know. And now the rabbit's foot's gone, which I would have loved to go search that deck next and get that rabbit foot. That was an OP item, I think. I need to rescue some hostages. 
but I can't move these ones until one dies. So that's kind of lame. Do I just try to get to the closet, do some searching? Hmm. Hmm. I also could do a rest. I am missing two health, right? Hmm. Hmm. So using the flashlight first removes the first card, letting you search always hits a new card. Hmm, yeah, true. But I still there'll be a third card I might not know. Yeah, true. Okay, let's use the flashlight to start. I mean, that. let's get some information, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's just do that to start. Everything was flying around. Place poltergeist, so Terra would go up. Place the poltergeist with the closest victim or in your space if there's no victims. And then it kills the victim. Hmm. One, two, three. One, two. It would go here to the most, right? It would go here to the most. So she would go down the ballroom and, and kill. And then the next round. Uh, oh, actually, she would go. She moves her two. One, two. And then, yeah, we go here to kill. And, and horror only goes up one. Horror only goes up by one. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? It is known info. There's no way I can go and save them. I don't, I don't see that happening. I'm way too far away. I have to like get them like uh, up into this bathroom. That's crazy. Crazy. Hmm. I want to pitch it just for this, and now, and we know it's going to be able to kill one. So may, maybe we can buy ourselves some time. But then again, we also know what it's doing, so like, we know where it's going. I don't know. I'll put it on the bottom. Okay, so this flashlight, if I'm, if I'm searching the attic, I'm getting an old revolver right now. But, I could search first. But if I'm giving up on this deck, I don't want to waste the flashlight on this deck. I think I'm going to give up on it. Yeah, I think I'm giving up on it. But then what am I doing? Just running... I guess I'm going to the closet. One, two, three. And we can search in the closet. Okay, okay. Let's sprint. Yeah, let's sprint. Three dice. Try to get to the closet. Uh, we got one success. We could pitch two cards and we get one, two, three. We're in the closet in one shot. And... Yes. Pitch. And pitch. Okay. 
Uh, so we lose one time. One, two, three. I wish I could move them, but I can't. So we're in the closet. Okay. Now let's search in the closet. Yep, let's search in the closet. Three dice. Uh, or do I pa uh, flashlight first? Do I want the padlock? Not really, right? I, I don't want the padlock, really. Minor power, you rolled a one. Oh, yes. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you. I almost forgot. I did forget. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. I didn't see what the dice were. Yeah, I gotta remember. I remember in Hostage Negotiator, whatever one where the ones are rolled, I always forgot that. Always forgot to look at those. I'm always just looking for successes. I never care about the other dice, but yeah, it matters now. Okay, so uh, I'm searching. I rolled two ones and a two. That sucks. Uh, so we're going to spend two time. And we're going to reroll everything. All right, no ones. Uh, we got one success which takes the top item, or we can pitch two cards. And we can look at the top two. I think we're pitching. Losing a time, down to one. Top two. Oh, Mr. Floppy. If the dark power has been revealed, you may remove this from the game to ignore the effects of Carolyn, where are you? I don't have that, right? Was that the one, the bad one, that's like not even in my game? No, that's forgetting something. Ignore the effects of Carolyn, where are you? I don't know what that means. Okay. If this card is discarded for any reason, shuffle it into the nearest item deck. It's a tarot card that shuffles Carolyn back in the item deck. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you, Celeste. Thank you. I wasn't sure what it was. So I probably should take Mr. Floppy, right? I should probably take Mr. Floppy right, then, right? Although, although, I just thought of something with the padlock. Can't, can't I, with the padlock, uh, lock this space here? If I lock this space, the killer can't go up here. And the killer can't get through here. So the ghost hunters would stay safe, right? Unless the killer broke the padlock, right? But it would just make it harder if I if these guys are just gonna stay up here and I can't move them unless one of them gets killed. I could just leave them and forget about them, right? So maybe the padlock may be the play. And then I just have to keep Carolyn with me, right? Is that the one that I was saying that it would take? Yeah. She might get shuffled back in, right? That one? Still have the flashlight, you can always see it coming. Yeah. I might use that flashlight right now if we uh, to take the top card of this deck just to get it done. Yeah, the only the only thing is this ghost hunter is making me change the like Valerian's padlock higher, but I'll take Mister Floppy. I'll put the padlock on the bottom. Then I'm going to use the flashlight right now. I'm going to discard this while on a search to take the top item card. The list of things in the, the question is, will any of this help me? Immediately roll a die. On a one to two, garage, three to four to closet, five to six in attic. Reveal all the item cards in the associated item deck, keeping their order the same. Then discard this card. Oh man, this is like, 
Okay, all right, one sec, we'll put it there. Okay, here we go. Let's roll a die. So what do we want it to be? We want it to be the garage. Because I'm not near there. I would like to know if I need to even go there. Uh, yeah. This is interesting. Very. So I like they, they put stuff in here to help you with searching. Because, yeah, searching is super important in this one. And I feel it's, like, very hard to do. Uh, it's a six. I promise. But, like, I'm going to re-roll it so it's actually in the tray. That would have been attic. Yeah, let's try again. Two. What's a two? Garage. Garage. Oh, okay. yeah. Flashlight. Carolyn's in the freaking garage under the flashlight. Here I am working my way through attic, then closet, and she's hiding all the way in the garage. And she's down there pounding back energy drinks with a flashlight. Again, call child services, man. Something's going on in this house. And, oh, she's also trying to find a way to escape uh, and where she wants to live. She hates being here so much. Uh, so she's, she's looking at points of interest to run away. She's planning an escape. And she's going to run all night. That's why she needs energy drinks. I see what's going on here. That's what's happening. Okay, that's what's happening. So we need the flashlight out of the way. And then we need uh, to find Carolyn under the garage. Oh, oh, even worse, uh, we need to get her outside, right? The garage, which you think is a way to get in and out of a home, opening the garage door, you would think, but for some reason, the garage, you have to go all the way back through the house up here and then out this window or ladder, or all the way up here and out this window. That's ridiculous. The garage is like the worst place. At least the attic, I could go, uh, you know, like on the way down, hop out. Or hop out here. The garage door opener isn't working. Oh, man. Not in this maniac mansion. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> what, what is going on today in this house, in this tonight in this house here? All right. Okay, so now we know where Carolyn is, and we have to get there, and then we have to get out still, right? And then we win? Is that all we gotta do? Is that it? That's easy! <laughs> do I just beeline it? Just play the walk and see what happens? Or do I just hold these cards? Oh, man, I'm going to have another next turn. It's going to suck. Yeah. Let's play the walk. Three dice. This is a door? Oh, my God. Guys, there's no line there. I didn't see this. How come everything else in this game has lines? I see. Ah, oh, it's like these. I feel like there should be a line there, but, mm, you know, it is close enough. Like, these I understand, but for some reason, this little part I didn't see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. No, I didn't see this connection here, guys. I, I was literally, like, looking for these white lines, you know? I, I don't know why. I just was. That's weird. Did anyone correct me when I was talking about the outdoor spaces only being connected to the windows? I didn't realize the front door was open. Oh, man. Thank you for correcting me. Darren, Dan, Mark. Yeah, I just see that now. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I totally missed that. Sorry if you guys mentioned that when I was setting up. I didn't see any of that. I missed that. I'm sorry. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so this just got a little easier. Although the killer is still hanging out down there. Okay, let's walk. And maybe we bring a, uh, one hostage with us, maybe? Okay. Now, when you're playing a horror game, and you roll three dice and those are your numbers, do you get excited or do you get scared? Uh, what type of person are you? I, I don't know, but I'm excited. I'm excited. 
So we can move up to two spaces and we lose a time. Is, is there something in this game? You get like a super win? You just walk like a boss? Oh, I'm doomed? Oh, I was doomed from the start. When setup happened, I knew I was doomed. No, no. When I decided to play this live on stream for the very first time in this scenario without knowing what was going on, I knew I was doomed. But maybe we're still okay. So one. And then two. So I, okay, this changes everything, guys. I'm staring at this. When I was thinking about saving, um, saving victims, I'm like, man, wouldn't it be awesome to jump out the window and, you know, wrap back in the house through the garage or something? But I'm sitting here looking at it like, man, I, I don't want to jump out the window. I got to go all the way around to the ladder and I'm back up here. That's crazy. But now I want to jump out the window, come back in the front door and get to the garage, right? Yeah, man. Holy crap. My life changed today. I am having ups and downs here. Holy crap. Okay. Depends on your religious beliefs. <laughs> I am the religion. All right. Okay. Uh, I just have a focus left, so I think I have zero money. Yeah, next turn's like, a, uh, I'm doing nothing. Do I care about the focus? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'll just hold it. I buy nothing. Yeah, that sucks. Put all these back. Hmm. Okay, killer we said, one, two. I have to kill you, it told me to kill you. If there are no victims on the board, discard and draw the next tarot card. Otherwise, all victims in spaces adjacent to you move to your space. This isn't gonna be good. Uh, if there are any victims in your space, you may play one action card that inflicts damage. Kill one victim for each success, or each, each damage, sorry. Do not increase bloodlust. And then take one damage or one hit for each victim in your space. Then they all panic. What the hell? So I'm the killer now? What the hell's going on, man? All right. If there are any victims in your space, there are two. I don't have any action cards uh, that let me damage. And then I take two damage. I'm down to two health, right? And then they panic. So I'll roll two dice. I got a two and a three. So three. Two is this way. Three is this way. Okay. <laughs> what the hell? All right. Uh, then. No one's killed. Tear cards left. Free range items. All right, our turn. Play actions. I can focus. Sure. Let's focus. Rolling three dice. Two successes equals this drops down one, and we get two time. That's great. Okay, we're done. Eight to spend. Eight to spend. What are we doing? Just sprinting, right? Sprinting like crazy. Yes. There's no better movement, right? Sprint is the jam. And we also need some searching, but I don't know if we're going to get all the way there. Let's see. In a perfect world, I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spaces to get there. Okay. 
That's a lot. Or I go just one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I think I'll leave this victim here and say screw it. And I could get a free move out of one of the victims. And, or a free search card. Hmm. I wish I had that second victim. That's crazy. Oh. I know I'm going to die without ever being near the villain. I was thinking that, Dan. I was thinking that too. I was like, man, I'm, I'm like worried about going near the, vic uh, the killer, but like, I, I don't need to to die. I do have short resting. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's take two sprints. For four. Let's take two close. Oh, how many cards? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'll just take the search or should I take the guard? I probably should take a guard, right? Cause I might end up near the killer. Yeah. I'm going to take the guard. Maybe we can get a free search off of my health or my, uh, rescuing. I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. I'm going guard. Oh, good call. Dance this guard too. Okay. You choose not to save victims. You do have five spaces to garage. Yeah. Oh, you're going this way. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. But like in my mind, I'm thinking like, even if I go the other way, like I, I maybe avoid the killer. I can get a free move out of that. But like, this is too juicy. This is kind of juicy. This is juicy. I don't know. And in my mind, it keeps me away from the killer a bit. But then again, it's like, I might end up in the killer's space. I, I don't know. So yeah, I could just go the other way. And not rescue. Or I could take this one with me. One, two, three, four, five. Take them both into the garage with me. But then I don't rescue anybody. Which might be okay. That might be okay. Yeah, maybe I do that way. Uh, we'll see how the first sprint goes, though, I think. All right. But then I might be able to search in there, too. Uh, no, I'll keep the guard, I think. Uh, uh. No, let's get greedy. Let's get greedy. I think. No, like I'm debating. I have to heal for, for sure. I have to heal for sure. But it might only be for one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get greedy with the search, I think. Could be the end, but uh, yeah, I'm going to get greedy. Okay. Uh, no, we're, oh, we're doing the killer action, right? Yeah. No, maybe I take the guard. Yeah. I'll take the guard. I'll take the guard. Yeah, now I wish I had the med kit, I know. Okay. So now killer. Oh yeah, we'll put the focus back. So killer is going to go here. Kill one of these. Bloodlust goes up. Okay, then Terra card. Unstoppable evil. Roll a die. <laughs> what is this? Why do I roll a six here? So I could take damage equal to my roll and I'm dead. Well, I'm not dead. I flipped my heart token. But I could be dead. Probably dead. Or I can kill six victims. I choose which victims. If they're not enough, I take damage. Yeah, that card is BS. I agree. Wow. And I can't re-roll it probably, right? Yeah, because it's not a horror roll. It's not a horror roll. Oh, man. <laughs> 
Uh, well, we're definitely killing a ghost hunter. Oh, but they're extra bloodlust. Oh, this game. One, two, three, four. Uh, five, six. Like, I don't know. Sure. So bloodlust is going up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, one, two, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I take damage at the top. I take damage at the top. So uh, I'm going to take three damage anyway. Uh, so that's not the right play. I just got to let it see if I have a heart token under here. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, I think it was there. Pretty sure. Yeah, I don't know what to say. I rolled a six. That feels bad. So yeah, let's not kill the victims. Uh, hopefully I remember where they were. Um, here maybe. Uh, these One was here. One was here. One was here. One was here. Yeah, eight bloodlust because of uh, every time. So if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that means uh, I would take three damage anyway. And I'd be discarding terror cards. So like I lose either way, right? So let's just take the damage. We'll take six. And if I have a heart under here, if I have a heart under here, uh, we end the current phase. And we keep going. If it's blank, we lose. Oh, we have our okay. We're alive. We're alive. And any extra damage goes to waste. Any extra damage goes to waste. Yeah, it should be like half, you know, rounded down or something. That's kind of nuts, right? Okay, so that's out. And then we replace this. Okay, we end the current phase which was the killer phase, which was this horrible terror card, which is pretty much over anyway. Okay, panic phase, uh, no one was killed. Upkeep phase, uh, no, rearrange items, no. Action phase, all right. Okay, we're still in it, we're still in it, we're still in it. Okay. Uh, YOLO? I think I still go around. I think I still go around. Um, just so I might be able to get a free action card or a free search card if I get in here, maybe. No, that, I won't have enough movement. Well, let's just do the first sprint and see what happens. Uh, four dice, right? Yeah, I, uh, I can, can I still rest? No, right? Because I only have one health. That's my new max, right? Right? Is that how that works? I don't know. You guys will tell me. Yeah, so resting is like pointless, right? I think. I can't remember. It doesn't happen very often. I can? Like, is my health, my max health still six? Or is that not a thing anymore? I rolled three ones. What the hell is that? What the hell is going on? Okay, so this could let me move two spaces and lose a time. So if I'm getting a little greedy, I could go rescue. One, two. But I don't know if that's the play. I could spend two time and re-roll. Man, 
Yeah, those ones. That's three. I'm going to lose four time on this alone. Uh, Rogue Watson, thank you for subscribing. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, guys. I know that's why I'm complaining about three ones, because this, I lose time for it. Yeah, this is an expensive sprint. But then I could spend two to re-roll all of it, but then I might not get successes, I might still get some ones, and then I've spent more time. So, uh, let's just roll with it. Uh, one, two, three, four total loss of time to move two spaces. Yeah, that's rough, man. Hmm. So I'm going to go one, two, out the window. Okay. And then I'll rescue this. Now, here's the options. If I'm worried about time, I could get it right back to the two that I lost. I could take a search card, or I could do this, which just gets me two time. I'll probably save this one. I might just move one space right now. That's probably the right play, right? Just move one space. After that sprint card. I think that's the play. Move right, get two time back. What is that? I don't know, Dan. Yeah, Joseph, you're right. The 666 earlier definitely spelt doom. All right. So now I'd, in a perfect world, I'd like to move one, two, three to get into this room. I, I don't know the timing on the loss of, yeah, I don't know when that happens, but that's fine. Don't care. All right. Four dice still. Four dice still. We're going to sprint again. Okay. We have one one in there. Okay. Uh, we could get the three by tossing two cards. So let's toss a focus. And let's toss a weak attack. Uh, yeah. I knew I should have took that a search card. Oh well. We're just going there and we'll rest up, I think. One, two, three. And that will lose us another time. Down to one. And we lose a time from this. Down to zero. Fun, fun, fun. All right, we're going to try... Uh, hold on, let me find out about the resting. What happens? Final token stuff, right? Uh, if the f black final token is blank, you're dead the game over. If it's not blank, however, they come back to life in classic horror movie faction, fashion. Replace the black final health token with the white. Based on how much health is showing on the back. Make up the rest with normal health markers, then remove the final health token from the game. Whenever someone comes back to life, the current phase immediately ends. Play continues to the next phase. If their health is fully... Depleted a second time and their white final health tokens removed. There is no coming back and they're truly dead. Uh... So, no yeah, nothing here says this is your new health max, right? Uh, page 28 under Adrenaline Rush. Okay, uh, let's read. If either the final girl and or the killer has only has their final health token remaining, either black or white, you may roll plus one additional die for your whole rolls, plus two if they are both down to only one health. This is indicated by the plus one icon on the back of the tokens. If additional health is recovered, such as they have more than just the final health token remaining, this benefit is lost. Yeah, it doesn't imply it because you could flip over the three heart token and get 
like two extra wooden health tokens, which means you're above the plus one. Yeah, I'm going to say you can heal because nothing here says, I'm sure it would tell you. Uh, oh, additional health is recovered. Oh yeah, I guess recovery. Like, yeah, you're right. You're right. Recovered. Yeah. Okay. I'm down. I'm down. Celeste, I'm in. I'm in. This makes sense. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so we can heal. We can heal. All right, so then I'm going to try to heal then. Short rest. Four dice. Four dice. Two successes is two hearts. Two hearts, but now we roll less dice, so I, I'm not feeling great about it, but it's what we got. Hopefully we don't get killed by the next card. I mean, some of them could make us... Hit ourselves for six. You never know. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to stop there. Because I don't have a search. I need to search the deck still. I want to have lots of cards, rerolls, and everything to help me with the searching. So, all right. I have zero. Oh, yeah. I can't even afford a search. So I have to pitch. I have to pitch. Let's pitch. These two walks should just buy a search. Let me hit this focus. Okay. So we can't leave the room. Uh, sure. I don't know where this was here. Sure. So if we get the search, yeah, healing might have been really dumb there. I probably should have healed after, but then again, the tarot card might wreck me. Oh, okay. All right, we're done. Reset to six. Uh, her ability is just going to kill this one. And go up to here, which goes one, two. Oh, yeah, we're rolling way less dice now. Oopsie. Definitely going to start with a focus. Okay. Uh, then tarot card is... It's a fake! Discard a random item card. If you have no items, discard and draw the next tarot card. Okay, so I discard Mr. Floppy. Can I discard Mr. Floppy? Oh, I have to shuffle it in the nearest item deck. If this card is discarded for any reason, shuffle it to the nearest item deck, right? Right? Or is he immune right now? Is there something weird? No, he's only immune if we get that other card, right? This can shuffle up the deck. We might see Carolyn pop to the top, but probably not. Mr. Floppy is an effect that be used if it is discarded, but cannot be used until the dark power is revealed. Mr. Floppy can never be discarded due to a game effect before the dark powers revealed. Or if the forget something epic dark powers in play. Yeah. All right. Here's the thing. How is that other card worded where they're all face up? Because do they stay face up? I remember what that was. Oh, it was an item. There are there rules based on shuffling items in? And does it tell me to flip them back face down or do I not? And only this one's face down. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, this is a weird situation, right? Uh, I feel like it's in here something about when you're supposed to shuffle.
Discarding, drawing, playing, removing. Discarding. Place the indicated card in the appropriate discard pile. Action cards that are discarded. No. I don't know. I'll just do it face down, all of them face down, I guess. I, I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. Okay, uh, Mr. Floppy is getting shuffled in with Carolyn, Flashlight, Energy Drink, and Map. I know there was something mentioned in the rule book as like how the top card could become face down or something, but maybe that's not. And, and, and I don't reveal the top, right? I don't think I reveal the top. But now there's five items in here. This is stupid. <laughs> this is so annoying. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, let's just throw that there. All right. Oh my God. Discard a random item card. If you have no items, discard the draw the next tarot card. Okay. So now the killer is going to move two towards us, but doesn't reach us. Yeah, this is lame. Lame, lame, lame. All right. <laughs> Andrew, this is my first time playing. I don't expect to win, but I, like I said before, it's the search mechanic in this game. I understand you're supposed to be like at a disadvantage, finding the best items. It should be hard, but I'm a loot goblin in games, so I love to get items. I love to build myself up. I love to be more powerful. This game is not really that. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But searching for things is hard. Whenever I have to search for something in the deck specific, I got to bet I won't find it because spending time to sit and search, spending actions to do that, it pulls you away from the other things in the game you need to be doing, like rescuing uh, hostages, moving around the board, you know, getting kill cards, buying other things to help your rolls. The search thing is, is like you're spending a whole bunch of action economy and, and actual resources in the game on it. But the whole idea that it's like blind cards and, and you can't search that easy, you need lots of successes to even get a good search. Otherwise, you're just taking the junk off the top. And then the fact that this adds in things that shuffle stuff back, it's just very frustrating. The, the whole item searching mechanic in this game is frustrating, and I know it's designed to be. But personal preference as a player, I love finding loot in games and using that loot, and I love leveling up and getting more powerful by the end of the game in general, in gaming, video gaming, board gaming, whatever. But uh, yeah, and I even said right at the beginning, the fact that the win condition is relying on items I knew I was going to be like, oh, this is going to be annoying. And I don't expect to win the first time. Obviously, there's lots of luck involved in these items, right? Um, but the game is just toying with me at this point. So I don't feel bad. It's fine. I'm having fun. But yeah, it's just, I said right from the beginning, I, I knew it. I knew it was, was going to be trouble. Ugh. Anyways, all right, let's carry on. I mean, we still could win if we get lucky. I don't know. All right, anything else? Uh, did the killer kill? No. Oh, it didn't matter because there's nobody in his space. Or her space. Okay. Okay. All right, let's just search. No, let's focus first. Let's focus first. Read the Mr. Floppy special rules again. Can never be discarded by game effect until dark power is revealed. Yeah, but I thought, I thought his power... Hold on. I thought his power. Oh, I guess. Ah, okay. I just took this as like, it, this also can't be discarded because it would just get shuffled back in the item deck. But it's just saying if it is discarded. So maybe I'm not allowed to discard it at all. Mr. Floppy has an effect that can be used if it's discarded. Ah, okay. I went too fast. I went too fast. I'm dumb. Uh, but cannot be used until the dark power, until the dark power is revealed. 
The Dark Power. Dark Power. Isn't this the Dark Power? Yeah, it, it is the Dark Power, right? Yeah, the Dark Power is revealed. I, I'm assuming it just means this is flipped, right? Oh, but I'm not using the ability. I see. As an effect that can be used if it's discarded, but cannot be used until Dark Power is revealed. Okay, so it can be used. But Mr. Floppy can never be discarded due to a game effect. Before the Dark Power is revealed. Well, the Dark Power is revealed, right? Or if the Forgetting Something Epic Dark Power is in play. Yeah, I think he still can be discarded because I've revealed the dark power, right? And that's what this is, right? Dark power, dark power, it's revealed. Am I, am I doing it wrong? Is there something wrong here? Uh, help me out. Help me out. Anybody? I'm not using his special ability. Yeah, that we know. That we know. Yeah, his special ability, if the dark power's been revealed, you may remove this from the game to ignore this effect. So I can if I see that card, but that card hasn't come up. Yeah, I think I'm still shuffling it in. I'm still shuffling it in, right? So I did do it right. I did do it right. Okay. So just to be clear for the record, uh, can you please write down that Mike James is incorrect and Rob is right? Okay, just, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, and then we're gonna put it on a plaque and up on the wall. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. All right, perfect, thanks. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, it feels really good, yes. Oh, it feels good to, to be right, and Mike James is wrong. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, of course, always, every time, yeah, okay. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> yeah, I know. It would have been really nice. I wish you were right, Mike. I wish you were, but I don't think you are. Oh. <laughs> the card says shuffle it, not discard it, right? In that case, I think you have to shuffle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're all being dumb. Yeah, I'm being dumb for sure. Yeah. Yeah, because it just says shuffle into the deck. No, it did say discard. It did say discard. Discard a random item. It did say discard. We're not being dumb. That's what caused the whole drama. It was like, wait, discarding Fluffy. Am I allowed? I don't know. But if I am, he's shuffling into the nearest item deck. Yeah, there a little, little weird interaction there. All right, well, let's do this. Okay. Carolyn... On top. On top, please. Did we do this yet? No, we didn't, right? I don't think so. We're just rolling two dice? I don't think we did this. One success. Uh, sure. And sure. Now we'll search with three dice arenos. Oh, was that a one? That was probably a one, right? I think it was a one. I'm pretty sure. I bumped it, but... I'll just lose it anyway. I'm not sure if there was a one in there. You guys can tell me. I think one of those was a one. All right. Uh, searching with three dice. Yeah, it was a one. Okay, thanks, Dan. I know you're on it, Dan. I know you're over there, like, with your voodoo doll trying to make all the dice into ones. You're, you're you know. Five, five, six. All successes. I just need a two. Thank you, dice. I just need a two, but you're, you're kind. Take the top two item cards of your deck and choose one. Yeah, this is weird happening twice in a game. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if that was the second or the first card, but it's Carolyn. And Mr. Floppy. <laughs> hmm. I think I might need to do a poll. I'm not sure which item to take here, guys. Hmm. Should I roll a die? I don't know. This is really tough. Hmm. Take the doll, says Mike. 
Oh, okay, Mike. I'll take that doll. No problem. Uh, okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> Carolyn. All right. Mr. Floppy, though. I don't think I'm going to search again. I'm just going to run. But should I put Mr. Floppy on top, though? Because, uh, I mean, it can't save me now. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'll leave it on top. It'll get shuffled anyway and screw me over, so who cares? All right. Uh. Dan says, obviously Carolyn to bottom seems useless, cannot even fight. <laughs> All right, for those that joined late, uh, we're trying to get Carolyn uh, with us. We're trying to get her out of the house because we can't kill the killer because it has no health. So when Carolyn joins you, remove all minor dark power cards from the game. There are none. We never saw any yet. Of course, we'll draw one right after this. That's how that'll work. Uh, oh, wait. From the game? Am I supposed to look through the deck? Uh, I might have, am I supposed to go through the deck and thin it out if it's in there? Huh. Huh. If they are out, I believe. Yeah, that's interesting, right? Because it just says remove them from the game. So I, I don't I don't know. Um Carolyn cannot be killed or discarded for any reason. You cannot place her in your backpack. Yeah, but Mike, just because you do it doesn't mean it's correct. Probably wrong. <laughs> Ah, just kidding. All right, just kidding. All right. Okay. Carolyn, there you go. Just toss them out when they appear. I thought of that first, and I thought of that too. It was like... It says remove them all from the game. Like, it doesn't say discard any that are in play. It also doesn't say search the deck and go get any. It doesn't say take them out of the discard pile. It just says remove them from the game, which would make me think... If they're in play, if they're in the deck, or in the discard pile, they're removed from the game. But yes, I could just discard them as they come up. But that's the way I would take that. Is she now just, is protection against minor dark powers? That's how I would take it, but who knows? I don't know the actual intent. Alright, and we lose the time for searching, right? Alright. Now, I think... Sprinting for three is all we need. Two successes on a sprint. I have three money. I have close call. I need to keep guard. I think I stop. I think I stop. Unless I need to buy like two sprints. But I'm going to have walks back also. Or if I need to get another guard. Ooh. Because I could get attacked twice, right? Although I have a victim with me to help. I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. I'll stop there. I'll spend three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So... Oh yeah. Let's go. What am I doing? Yeah, I'm only spending two on a sprint because I don't trust two walks to get me three spaces I don't yeah. so I'm leaving one on the table or do I discard a close call to get one more and then I have two for a second sprint or probably a second guard I probably should buy a second guard right Instead of the close call. Yeah, I'm going to toss the close call for a fourth money uh, to get myself a second guard. Because it would suck to die here, but it might still happen. Yeah. All right, reset to six. Those will go back in. As much as I love to have two close calls in hand, I feel safe. Um, I feel like the guards, I might be using them right here. All right. Killer moves in. Killer kills this one. This moves up. Okay. Terror card. It's all here. All down to the terror card. Please don't shuffle Carolyn back in the deck. 
But it's only if I don't have her with me, right, or something? Yeah, as long as I'm holding her hand, we're good, right? Like, I'm safe from that card. I only need Mr. Floppy if she's not. If I'm, like, storing her in a room somewhere or something. <sighs> voices. I hear voices. If there are no victims on the board... Oh, there are victims. Uh, all victims able to move up to the next floor do so. Uh, no. I'm assuming it just means one space. Or does it mean move as many spaces as they need? Like, you know, is this going to move up here like this? And is this one going to, like, go all the way here? Or does it mean only if they can move, uh, like, they actually have an opening in their room? Lots of questions with this one. This one, I feel, is, like, maybe the sloppiest scenario that's not clear that I've come across so far that has the most questions. It's just one space? Okay, yeah, movement is just one space probably, right? Mr. Suitcase would know. Okay, so then these two would move up. This one would stay here. And then this one was here, I believe. So yeah, it's all, only these ones. See, because like, again, it, you know, able, able to move up to the next floor could be if they're just on the top floor, they can't move up, you know? Or if they're outside, you know? If they're outside, they can't move up to the next floor, you know? So it's like, that could be taken a few ways in the English language, uh, but yeah. All right. Yeah, because there, there's definitely could fit more text on the cards, like, to be a little more clear, but, uh, all right. So now horror rating goes up to two. And then it's going to go after the closest victim, moving three spaces. One, two, three. Doesn't get to kill anybody. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. So those guards were pointless. Okay, great. And now, uh, a victim was killed. Nobody's in the space. No panicking. No finale card. All right, now it's just running, right? Sprint. Sprint. Oh, do I have focus actually first? Yeah, let's focus first. Let's focus first because we're only, we're only rolling two dice right now. Hiya! Two ones? Are you serious? All right. That's a four time loss. I'm going to spend two time and I'm going to reroll it. I know this is probably bad. I really should just be focused on sprinting. Boom! Double success. All right. So time will go up to. And this goes down to rolling three dice. Yes, 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 yes. So I went from losing four time to gaining time, but I had to spend two, so it's really like losing. Okay. Now we sprint. Three dice. Oh, man, another one in there. Come on with the ones. <laughs> no rerolls, so we're just taking that one success which is two spaces. And then it is, uh, we're losing a time for the one and a time for this, down to four. And then we're gonna walk, walk it out, walk it out. Three dice. Two successes, two spaces, and uh, one time loss. GG. GG, we win, for sure. I feel like it's not a win, but it's, again, the weird rules. The weird uh, uh, victory condition, I should say. Where is it? Since the Poltergeist cannot be attacked, you do not win against her in the normal way. Instead, the only way to win against the Poltergeist is to find Carolyn and save her by reaching an exit space while she's with you. And also not being dumb and remembering there's a front door, Rob. Uh, all those things need to line up, and then you can win. And having an awesome chat to remind you that there is a door there. <laughs> Dan says, what's this one called again? Cardio Manor? Uh, yep. <laughs> Run! 
Wow. We win. Man, the shuffles, these shuffles on this deck were like, I honestly died inside a couple times there. Uh, yeah, when that got shuffled, like, oh, when I saw her second in the deck, face up, I was like, okay, I see the end in sight, it's possible. But as soon as it shuffled Mr. Fluffy in there and made the deck bigger and shuffled, I was like about to get lose my mind, I'll be honest. Uh, I didn't eat her bunny. I think her bunny is only from the, like, the major dark power or something. Yeah, look at this. This is like... Don't have nightmares, everybody. Hopefully, hopefully you don't have nightmares tonight, seeing that picture. Uh, but yes, there is this. So, if this came into play, the epic dark power... So, this is randomly, out of four cards, you could see this in your game. But I don't play with it. You only play with it when you want an extra challenge. I, I don't need more challenge in this game. Uh, you may not win the game unless you reach an exit space with Carolyn and the Mr. Floppy item card. So this card is the one that if it comes into play, this makes it so uh, Mr. Floppy... Uh, oh, the special rules, right? This is the one on the special rules. Uh, yeah, forgetting something. So he can never be discarded now if this came into play. So that changes the victory condition. So like, if you just want to spice it up, you have a fourth card you can shuffle in. They're always the ones with the red border uh, that make it more difficult. Uh, but they're optional. As soon as I see them, I just usually put them back in the box and just use them in the future, like maybe. But, like, I don't play this game enough to be, like, you know, I, I got other games to play, right? I, I got to play different stuff on, on the stream, you know? So it's, like, eh. but I'm glad they're in the game. That, that's great, right? For someone who keeps playing and, and you know, they're, like, kind of solve the scenario. It's, like, okay, shuffle that in or, or force that in the game, you know? Like, maybe make it 50-50 or something. Discard a couple cards to make it show up more often or something. Uh, but, yeah, that's it. We got out. We made it out of Creech Manor. Yeah, I, I like... This is messy. I don't know what's going on here with not fighting. I like that it changes the value of cards. Like, I didn't even think about Critical Blow, Furious Strike, or Retaliate. That's very interesting. Should I have had Retaliate? Yeah, there's cards in here that control you. Oh, I didn't have any Minor Dark Powers. Oh, there is a Carolyn Where Are You in here. If she's not with you, discard and draw the next tarot card. Otherwise, shuffle Carolyn into the item deck of the nearest item. Do not reveal the top item card. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, we put those on the bottom, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we didn't have any minor dark powers in the game, so that didn't matter. Yeah, these cards. These cards that, that actually come out and, like, fight you. But, again, healing can just help with that. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Sacred Grove is another one I haven't tried yet. Is that the one I haven't played yet either on stream? I have one more, I think, that I haven't played yet. That's still in shrink. Uh, but I'll probably, I'll probably schedule that next week. Uh, maybe Friday again. We can play some more Final Girl. But yeah. Yeah, I really like the location in this one. Uh, the whole idea of the house and jumping out of the windows and going up ladders. I mean, we didn't see it that much in this one, but I did like it. I did like it so far. That was cool. Not a fan of the Ghost Hunters event card, though. That was messy. But uh, yeah, normally I would have done my normal play of like trying to grab victims as fast as possible, level up my card, flip my final girl, get my ability. But it was like as soon as those Ghost Hunters came out and was like, yeah, you can't move them. They don't follow you. You know, until one of them dies and they're like super far away from the, the poltergeist. I'm like, <sniffs> but then again, there's cards in this one that possess me to kill victims. So if that happened when I was near them and maybe I could kill one of them and then move the other ones with me, that would have been nice, but it just didn't line up. So, yeah. Uh, Mike says, you might want to play that one off stream first. Heads up. Killer Ra Wraith. Killer Wraith and Divine Wraith are brutal. Yeah, I'll take a look at it, Mike. Uh, thanks for the tip. I will play it off stream. 
So if I have time to play it off stream before next week, I'll schedule a stream. Um, but I'll definitely play it before I play it on stream. That's a good call. Good call. Thank you. All right. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I'm going to get out of here. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. We are back tomorrow playing Lands of Galzir. Uh, I was just sorting that out this morning. Got to go read the rules for that. Get the stream set up for that one tomorrow. Um, so Mel and I are going to be playing that one tomorrow. It's a campaign game, a sandboxy open world game uh, designed by the folks over at uh, uh, Snowdale Design. Uh, so we're going to get that one cracking. So that's already scheduled. You can set a reminder for that one. Uh, if you want to watch more streams on the channel, uh, make sure you subscribe, turn on the notification bell. Also check the playlist down below if you're looking for more Final Girl. Because uh, if you're watching this in the future, there may be other ones that happen after. You can go watch or join us live for, or if you want to see the previous playthroughs. Uh, what else? I don't know. Thank you everyone for supporting the channel. If you'd like to donate to the channel, links are down below uh to help us you know afford games like this buy games from our local game store or online to play on the channel upgrade equipment travel to conventions all that kind of stuff thank you thank you everybody thanks for all hanging out thanks for voting thanks for playing along of course and uh yeah stay away from the tv if uh it's covered with uh snow on it you know if you're not getting reception on your antennas and your tv has snow on the screen um don't go stare into it you might be possessed. Anyways, thanks you all for watching. Oh, Mike, yes, I do have the birds vignette. Um, yeah, stay tuned. All right, thanks a lot for watching, guys. See you later. Bye-bye. Thank you.